Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's session of our Go Digital Western Cape webinar series. Um, my name is Robert Davids. I'm from the Digital Economy Unit at the Department of Economic Development and Tourism, and I'll be your host uh, for today's session. So it's really good to have all of you with us today for our familiar faces who are part of our uh, um, Go Digital Western Cape community. Welcome back. And then to our uh, new members in our, in our audience, um, a very warm welcome to you. It's really lovely to have you with us today, and we hope you can have a really good time and have some really um, good insights um, as we go through the next hour with you. Um, today's session, as you could see from the invitation, is titled Virtual Reality, the next frontier in digital marketing. Um, so this has absolutely nothing to do with Star Trek, because I must admit when I first thought about the, the new frontier, Star Trek came to mind. But uh, in, in a way, this is a little bit futuristic, and that's why we thought um, it's a really, really relevant topic for us to have for this webinar series. And while it may sound a bit futuristic, it's actually something very relevant and very real um, and has been in the market uh, for, for a couple of years. But I'll say a little bit more about the topic in, in a few minutes. Um, so yes, as I said earlier, a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this webinar series is um, an initiative of the Department of Economic Development and Tourism, and it's in direct response to, to COVID-19 and a way in which our department and our digital economy unit is supporting the um, business, especially the SME um, business ecosystem in the Western Cape. There are several other initiatives which fall under this banner, but um, this one, of course, is the, the webinar series where we try and share really relevant information with you and important information with you um, during the COVID-19 period. And while we are six months into, into the lockdown, um, there have been some really significant and dramatic changes to our landscape for business um, and, of course, on a personal side. Um, but from a, a business support side, these webinars are really here to support you as a business community um, and to give you some new ideas, great awareness, um, and spark some new thoughts and creativity, but also a place where we can all come together and, and share our collective wisdom um, as we navigate this really tough time. So as you as you can see, um, I I love this picture of, of the little girl with, with the VR goggles, partly because virtual reality, virtual reality often um, makes me think uh, about yeah, new, wonderful um, things, technology, imagination, and a bit of, of playfulness at the same time. But uh, what the VR or virtual reality, VR or augmented reality, AR, um, are technologies which have been around for quite some time. Um, they, are, they are not new technologies, but they are very rapidly um, coming, becoming commercialized and becoming commonplace in, in the market. So what we're going to try and do today is give you as the, as the audience some insight into how VR and AR works, what the difference is between the two, and why they can, they're important for a digitalized world, um, especially one in which business is moving more and more into the digital space, what it means for you, um, regardless of which sector your business is in, um, whether it be tourism, manufacturing, retail, hospitality, property, there are some really, really interesting technologies, I mean, sorry, um, applications of, of this technology, regardless of which sector you're in. So we're going to share some some insights um, and some ideas around how these um, tools can be applied to, to your business. And of course, specifically to marketing, because I think that's probably one of the areas that it's uh, most applicable. And um, as I said earlier, I, I'm not a techie, but uh, VR it often makes you think of, of things which are quite futuristic. And personally, I've never experienced it to its full extent, but I have seen at some gaming conventions um, and tech conventions when this is being used, people get so immersed in the space that I've seen people fall off their chairs, walk into walls and all those wonderful things. So it's also a, a, a fun and novel um, technology which, which we can incorporate. Um, but as you can probably hear, I'm not the expert on this at all. And for that reason, we have our presenter, um, 
on, on this pre webinar today, um, Stanley Edwards, who is the director at uh, Platypus Digital. So to Stanley, um, a very warm welcome to you and uh, thank you very much for your time and um, all the efforts you've made to, to preparing this. So Stanley, I must also, uh, for those in the audience, Stanley has just returned from the, the Kruger National Park um, and he's done some really exciting work there with virtual reality um, in terms of, I think it's, it's cinema, so Stanley will tell us the name, but he's, he's fresh from, from the Kruger National Park where he's actually um, used um, and applied this technology for a really exciting project they're busy with there. So Stanley is the expert in, in, in this and um, we're going to hand over to him now and uh, Stanley once again thank you very much for joining us. So on that note, um, are you ready for to take us through um, the presentation? Stanley, we, we're good to go. Um, I can see and hear you clearly. Thank you very much. Okay, brilliant. So as you, as you would have realized, I'm not a techie myself. I'm a, I'm a content <laughs> producer. <laughs> okay. I love, I, love, I, I, um, I love creating content and sharing stories. Um, and obviously, you know, the technology has changed in the past. And, you know, and, and now we get to certain technologies like, like virtual reality and augmented reality where we can now uh, create and share content more, more virtually. So, yeah, but thanks, thanks uh, for the invite. And, and I'm really excited to share some thoughts about VR and AR and how they can be used to create um, how you can be used, and obviously how to create opportunities and, and also earn money out of these. Uh, but from my side, as I said, I'm a content producer, I'm a storyteller. Um, and what I like to do is obviously look at how content can be shared across different platforms. So I think what's important to understand right from the front is that, you know, um, you know it doesn't really matter what the technology is. You have to look at, uh, you have to look at technology as an enabler. Content isn't always will be king. If your content's not good, um, people aren't going to follow you, they aren't going to engage with you. So it's really important to understand that although the technology might sound um, exciting and innovative, um, what you share and what you create by those platforms is also very important. Um, I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, it seems like everything, everything these days has, has, has gone virtual. Uh, there's some amazing new digital tools that have been developed. Um, and many of us have now learning to use these, uh, you know, like Zoom and Microsoft Teams as we do now. You know, we've learned how to work remotely, we've learned how to reach virtually, um, how to develop and use new marketing platforms, websites, social media, and, and obviously everyone's, everyone's starting online stores now. That certainly has created a, a huge need for this whole going digital opportunity. So as, as you mentioned, Robert, obviously, uh, you know, I think it's important to understand, you know, what virtual reality is and what augmented reality is and what the difference is between the two. So just to, just to say simply, I mean, virtual reality is where you are, you are at a place and you get transported to another environment through virtual reality. So that might be putting goggles on, it might be engaging with a virtual reality on your mobile phone. But basically, you're sitting at, sitting at a point and you get virtually transported to another world, to another environment. The mental reality is a bit different where you are at an environment. So just for argument's sake, say you're at a tourism spot and you use your phone and you use augmented reality to enhance your experience at that environment. So you might be um, gathering more information about the, about the location, some historical facts, some information, um, so it augments or, su or supports your experience at that physical location. So that's a basic, I suppose, a, a simple, a simple way of of, uh, of, of of sort of defining what the difference is between VR and AR. So the important thing is how can you use these technologies? And and I, I really want to focus on two things. You know, as you mentioned, is is one is is on marketing. How can you use these to to market? And how can people use these to as tools to to create business or create work for themselves as well. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I mean, there are there are lots of ways to use virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, I've, you know, I've attended a lot of conferences and seminars and done presentations. And often when people present examples of virtual reality and augmented reality, they present all these fantastic examples, which obviously are great to look at and great to experience, but they often need such huge budgets. It's not viable for people to to use them and engage with them. I think that's one of the problems that has sort of developed with VR and AR. You know, people think VR is, 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 is goggles and it's expensive to get them. And 
eventually reality depends what content you create, but it can be very expensive tool to use. So what I'm what what I'd like to do is say is, is have a look at and how how we can make that simple. What is the first step in using VR and AR? How can you get started? And I think from there it grows. Um, so for me, as I said, it, it's 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 you know the 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 use of of clients' um, content and how we share it by those platforms is important. But again, that's not you know, people are budget, as you know, even now post COVID or during COVID, you know, budgets are very limited, budgets are very tight. So how can we dip our toes into, the, into this? So I think what's, what's also important to understand is that, you know, when you talk about virtual reality, you know, I think every webinar or seminar or conference that I've seen advertised for VR or fourth industrial revolution, they always show someone with a pair of goggles on their head. Um, and goggles, uh, virtual reality isn't just goggles. Uh, you know, virtual reality goggles. It's much more than that. And what's very exciting now is that with the with the development of VR technology, with camera technology to be able to shoot VR, with software platforms that you can use to create VR, it's become a lot more accessible. Um, it's become a lot more easy to create that content. It's become a lot easier to share it and to be viewed across multiple platforms. So even your mobile phone or your tablet, where you use your finger to scroll across a, a 360 um, image, or even you just use your accelerometer in your phone, where you just hold your phone up in front of you and you move around in a circle and point up and down, you can also then um, you can also use VR in that side, in um, in, um, in that way. So VR can be VR tours or VR content can be very easily embedded into websites, into blogs, into social media. Um, and of course, yes, VR goggles. Um, and VR goggles aren't just the expensive ones. Um, Google uh, um, developed uh, Google Cardboard, which they, they put out a template where you can basically use a cardboard box and some lenses and compare it to own VR goggles where you pop your phone into. So Google's very, very, um, you know, they really try and drive the use of VR and try and make it simple and accessible for everyone. Um, and yes, you can obviously go up to the Oculus Rifts and, uh, you know, it's really expensive VR goggles. But I mean, this, if you look at this picture, I mean, those, the, the goggles that guy's got on his face is basically a, 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 a holder for a mobile phone. You slide your mobile phone into it, and then you use your mobile phone as a screen to um, experience virtual reality. And in fact, a couple, of, a couple of months ago, I was actually at this game, and I saw they were selling these, these type of VR goggles at this game. So they are quite easily accessible as well. So one of the great uses for... Um, for virtual reality is, um, is creating virtual reality tours. So what virtual reality tours are, is basically are typically made up of still 360 panoramic images, which are filmed with a, with, a, with a VR camera, which I'll show you as well. And those images are then linked via a software platform. And then once that VR tour is created, um, they're navigated by, by arrows or buttons it's a great interactive and very immersive and visual way to showcase a business or a property or a, um, a restaurant or whatever it might be. One of the best examples of a VR tour is obviously Google, as I mentioned. Um, so Google Street View is, I mean, what, what Google basically did was they did a VR tour of the world. Um, they, they developed a... Um, a VR, a very sophisticated virtual reality camera, which they strapped to the top of the car and they drove the roads. And I'm sure you've all used it. I'm sure you've all you know, experienced a Google Street View, which is basically an interactive uh, virtual reality tour. So these, uh, these, these vehicles travel the world and they created this ultimate VR tour where you could be transported everywhere. But I think, you know, I think like most people, well, the first thing people do when they look at Google Street View, they go and look for their own house. And they can, go, they can go anywhere in the world, but the, the first place you go is look and see your, your house on Google Street View. So it's a very exciting way that they've really used virtual reality into or VR or uh, VR tours to us. Um, and I'm sure you've looked up the little yellow man on a, on a road somewhere and had a look around and trying to, trying to see where you are. Um, and in lockdown, I mean, Google were, Google were promoting a lot of uh, VR tours of, uh, of locations and um, tourist destinations. So you can have your you can have your, your travel fix by using by using Google, um, Google Street View, um, and the way you navigate those is quite simple. I mean, there's little arrows on the ground, and you click an arrow and you move forward. You click an arrow and you move back. So those VR tours have become interactive, um, and but where it's developed from there, which is quite exciting, um, is that obviously Google Google started off with uh, with the um, Google Street View and Street Maps, 
to develop that further. And they develop, they develop a number of other technologies where people can then take it out of the road and off the road. They that they develop tricycles, um, and that image on your left um, is actually was done in South Africa, where um, Google allowed people to um, borrow their, 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 their VR camera rig, which is the one that was fitted to your vehicles. And what, what um, a couple of very innovative people did in South Africa, they walked all our national parks. So you can now do a virtual reality tour of the Kruger, of Table Mountain, and a whole lot of off-road um, environments as well. The street view and uh, there's a lot of um, photographers and volunteers guys that are, are going off-road and obviously creating structures of, of more tourist off-road environments as well. Um, and where that changed, where that moved to as well, was um, where Google works with what they call trusted uh, Google Street View photographers. And those photographers' role is basically to take you from the road into a business or into an environment. So this example is a um, it's a car dealership. Um, so here, what the Google Street View photographer has done is used the same 360 technology, but using a different camera or using a dis different system. So you could then, by the normal Google Street View, you could end up outside the car dealership. But now, with uh, with the Google uh, with the trusted photographer, they can take you into the dealership. So then you can do a physical tour, a walk around the car dealership, and even with 360 cameras now, you can actually walk. So you can walk from the street into the dealership and actually go and sit in a car as well and have a look around. So you don't have to you don't have to go to the car dealership anymore. You can just follow Google Street View, go into the go into the, um, the, 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 the showroom and even go and sit in a car. So those. So what I, what I want to chat to you about is obviously how 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 people can how businesses can use that as a tool um, for themselves to to create interactive VR tours of their businesses. Their, the accommodation, the hotels, the restaurants. So it's still using the basically the Google platform, but um, enhancing it through a listing with, with Google. So you know, if you the way Google works is that if you have a if you have a VR tool listed, obviously you get better um, you get better um, reach um, and better engagement if you have a, a VR tool attached to your Google Street, your, your normal Google listing as well. So it's quite it's quite exciting in terms of the way that that's created, but um, you know, with with VR, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different um, um, software and different technologies now, um, where people are are you know you can create tours that don't really have to they don't have to be Google listed. They can be they can be created and shared separately as well. So I suppose the question is is um, is why do people want VR tours? Basically, VR tours. Um, a VR tour is the next best thing to physically being there. So for real estate, for example, for travel, for hotels, even for meeting venues, restaurants, car dealerships, it allows people to explore and discover. It gives them a, a really a, a, a real view and a, an, 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 an unhitched view of exactly what, what, what they're getting. And I think now in COVID, where people are, you know, people are um, especially in travel, you know, they, they want to, they want, to understand where they're staying, they want to have a look around, they want to be comfortable. It gives them a lot more confidence um, if you can um, if you can look around the hotel you're staying in. Um, for real estate, for example, you know why why do a show house where you can do a virtual tour of, of, of a couple of homes um, and then select or you know select the ones you really want to go and visit. So you'll be able to um, to do a pre-selection through a virtual reality tour. Um, and then select the, one, the ones you want to do a physical visit because you know, show houses are, are, are a challenge now for real estate. And even if you're selecting a, a meeting venue for a conference, you know, why, why get in your car and travel to 10 different, you know, different uh, conference venues, meeting venues where you can, you can do that by, by virtual reality as well. So it's a great way to be able to, um, to do something, gives you more confidence and you can see exactly, exactly what you're getting. Um, we are, VR has been used a lot in, as I mentioned, in, um, in tourism, to promote tourism and events, um, used for real estate, and KLM, um, the airline, um, used it quite effectively for, from a training perspective. Um, so I, you can understand that you know, having a plane on the ground um, and having to train or, or, or train people on procedures, on, on flights, um, even the cleaning of the airplane is a challenge. So 
Uh, what they did was they created uh, viewer tours of the, of the airplanes, of the inside of the planes, which from a training perspective, although they also used that for a marketing perspective, where you could you could walk through the plane and see what your seat looks like or where you're going to be sitting. From a training perspective, they could then train people who were, for example, even cleaning the cleaning the airplanes after the flight. You know, you can't you can't as I said, you can't have it on the ground for a day to train people how to clean and how to you know deep clean and that type of stuff. So they go on a viewer tour, they can see exactly what the plane looks like inside. They can be pointed out exactly what they need to clean, how they need to um, prepare the plane for the next flight. Um, VRs also been used a lot in, in safety and emergency response training, um, you know, to put people in environments where it might be dangerous um, and having, you know, familiarizing them with, with, the, with the situation, whether that might be a, you know, a vehicle accident. What do you do when you first get to a vehicle accident? What's the first thing you, you do when you, when you arrive there? Um, so I think it's yeah, it's very it's very exciting in terms of the way the way, the way VR can be used and the way can, the way that's been embraced more now, as I said, through the through advancement of technology and the accessibility of the content as well, which is very important. So how's so how's how has VR developed? I think you know it's changed a lot from when I first started. You know the tech is is, is a lot easier. Um, the software platforms are, are more pervasive now. There's a lot of different software platforms. And the cameras that, that shoot VR are obviously a lot more, a lot easier and a lot easier to use. So what are some of the features that, that VR now offers as well? So as I mentioned earlier, you know, some of the, you know, a, a, a standard VR to a wind USB key is typically a, a 360-degree still panorama which you, which you scroll around. So if you're on your laptop, you'd use your mouse and scroll around the picture. If you're on your phone, you can move your phone around. If you want to pair goggles, you can look around. So this is an example of a VR tour that, that I did for one of the wine estates. Um, so as you can see on the, on the left-hand side is there are all the different panoramas that were shot at the, at the wine estate. So you can click onto any one of those scenes and you can move from the vineyards to the cellar, to the restaurant, um, to the different views. And then there's interactive hotspots and links within the 360 panorama, which links to the Facebook page, the social media, links to the online store, you can download a PDF um, of a, a wine list, and you can link to the online store. So the, the, the VR tour has now become a lot more um, a lot more efficient and effective in terms of a marketing tool for a business or property, where it's not just a case of creating a tour where you can just look around it and as, if you're not, as if you're virtually visiting. The tour works a lot harder now to be able to as I said, you know, link to your link to your social media, link to your online store, link to your website. You know, have, have uh, you know, download with documents, um, have photographs, link to videos. That almost acts like a mini website, which is which is fantastic. So it's important that, and what's also very important is that because of because it's an, an, an interactive experience, unlike a video, where a video is linear, it starts and ends at a certain point. You can decide how you navigate through um, an environment. And you can decide how long you want to spend on a, on a particular scene before you move on to the next scene. Um, we also created um, an interactive um, tour for a, 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 a retailer. So you could basically almost do like you've been online shopping, but you're walking through the store, and the inter interactive hotspots and links within that tour were links to more product, more product, uh, product information, um, videos about the products. And photographs of the products. So it's a fantastic way to be able to showcase, um, you know, any, any sort of retail environment. So how can we? How can you? I mean, who, who, who and how, how can you create VR tours? So as I said, the technology from from when I first started many many years ago, the technology was very expensive to use. It was quite complicated. The workflow was quite complicated. But these days, you get what we call. Um, so those dual fish eye um, cameras. So it's typically a small camera that fits in the palm of your hand, um, and you put it on a tripod. It's normally it's normally managed through a through an app, so you can see exactly what you're shooting. Um, and you basically, for a VR tour of a property, which is which is sort of what this example is showing, you basically walk through the property and do um, do multiple 360 degree panoramas within the property. 
you just walk through, you put it in the lounge, you put it in the dining room. So if you're being a car dealership, you just you'd start at the you would be a natural progression, you'd start at the you'd start at the, the entrance to the to the um, to the dealership um, and people getting follow like you did you speak for you. You had arrows on the floor and you just walk through the dealership, it'd be an arrow into a vehicle, and you'd step into the vehicle, have a look around the vehicle, step out of the vehicle. So you can basically do your shopping or your tour of the um, of the venue virtually. Much the same way as if you're traveling. If you're looking for a hotel to stay at, um, you want to look at the rooms, you want to look at the restaurants, you want to look at the view. Um, and as I said, VR, a VR, a 360 VR tour does shows you far more than photographs and videos will, will ever show you. Uh, you know, when you look at tourism, you know a lot of the content is, has got a very much of a sameness about it. You know, if you're going to a beach holiday, there's the couple sitting at the pool, there's the plate of food, there's all sorts of stuff that there's nothing that really shows you anything different to the other hotels. That really gives you confidence in, in making booking, um, converts people like a lot, a lot better. So they can see what they're getting. That's exactly, it's exactly what they're getting. So what we're looking at doing is is, um, is expanding our database of, of the. Of, I mean, we have a number of people that can shoot VR tours, and I work with with teams that can create these. We're also looking at, at, um, at training up some more people to be able to um, shoot the tours. Um, I had a call yesterday with the uh, in Zimbabwe who are uh, people, five guys who are starting to do VR tours of Zimbabwe from real estate to um, tourism. Um, and it's, you know, there's a need for this now. I think there's, a, there's more of a need now than, than, than pre-COVID. Um, where people, you know, as I said, I mean, people want confidence in, in what they're looking at, what they're buying, where they're traveling to. Um, so we're looking at building a database and creating more VR to creators. Um, as I said, the technology is now a lot cheaper and a lot, lot, lot simpler to use. Um, that's not me. It's a, this is a guy that does a lot of uh, does a lot of reviews of the VR software. Um, and as, long, as with the cameras, um, there's a lot of different um, pieces of software that stitch those or program those VR tours together. So to create a VR tour, as I said, simply you need a VR camera and you also then just need the software to be able to create it. So some of the software is free to use. Um, some of it is um, subscription based, but subscriptions are quite reasonable um, in terms of uh, in terms of what uh, what they charge per, per VR tour. It's normally like a hosting fee. It's, I suppose it's pretty much the same as, you know, if you're familiar with you know, creating, you know, a sort of website with Weebly or Wix or, you know, all of these tools that, are, that make it easy to use. So you don't need to be a programmer, you don't need to be a techie. Um, it's, all, all very, it's all fairly simple to create, um, to, to shoot and create and share these, these tools. Um, so these, as I, as I mentioned, the, you know, the, the, the camera technology to, to shoot VR has, has changed a bit change a lot as well. Um, and the best solution, I mean, although there's more complicated and more, more expensive rigs to use, and the best solution is what, as I said, what we call it a dual fish eye camera. So it basically shoots two fish eye images and the camera stitches that together into a, into a 360 panorama, which is typically, as you've seen, I'm sure you've seen, uh, you know, images where you can look around the room or look around the environment. And there's new ones being launched all the time. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, from from uh, from a couple of years ago, there were just a few models, and now there's a lot of new cameras coming out, a lot of new models being released with a lot of new features. So it does become quite complicated in evaluating you know, what cameras are the right cameras, what software is the right cameras. But that's what we that's what we're looking at doing. You know, as we're looking at helping you, you know, to get up and running and getting started. If you you know if you, if you feel that's that's something you'd like to do. Um, as I said, we work with a we work with a number of uh, creators around the country. We can assist you with, with creating the tours of of your of your of your, uh, your, your business as well. Um, so yeah, so as I said, we we, you know, we try and we try and look at the you know, we try and evaluate and look at the best tools, the best technologies, and try and make that as cost effective and easy to do as as, as possible. So there are a lot of opportunities out there. So Google started it. You know, we need to follow. We need to to follow where these big tech giants are going. And Facebook has invested heavily in virtual reality. Um, they bought it the Oculus um, a while ago and they keep developing new, new technologies and simpler technologies, cheaper technologies. Um, so if these guys are investing in it, it's something that's definitely going to be 
be with us more, more in the future than ever. Um, and Facebook, as I said, I mean one of the one of the big one of the big big investments they made was with Oculus, but you know, what they want to do is, is, is to make VR shareable as well. So and that's where that's where it's where it's become a lot more interesting is as I said, is the shareability of the company. In the past it was very limited to certain platforms, but now I can send you a link on WhatsApp and you can watch a VR tour on your phone. Um, embed a VR tour into Facebook. Um, so it's very exciting in terms of where we are is. And um, Robert mentioned in the beginning that I'm busy with quite an exciting project in the National Park as there last week. Um, so that's also using VR as a as a as a technology, but it's a bit more, it's a bit different where we built a, a, a 360 degree cinema, it's diffused in, in the Scuba in the Scuba National Park. It's a 30 seater cinema where you sit inside on a seat that swivels 360, and then the, the, the VR image is projected around. It's a 360 degree movie, so it's a wraparound IMAX. It's an audio visual surrounding experience. Because I mean, as I, you know, I do love, I do love VR as a technology, it's a great tool, it's a great experience, it's, it's unlike anything. But I find VR, VR goggles um, very limiting. It's a very uh, impersonal experience. So with the VR theater, it conveys that it's a shared VR virtual experience. We're all sitting in a, we're sitting in an environment and. Um, Watching nature and tourism documentaries. And one of the documentaries we're showing is, is, is the all um, the best migration in the Serengeti. So you can imagine sitting in this 360 theater with all the best running towards you and running past you and you turn around and they're running away. So you're really immersed in the story. So that's how you can take VR to the, to the next level. But as I said, for me, it's, it's how, do you, how can you use it? How can you practically use VR now you know, as, a, as, a, as a marketing tool? Um, but just in terms of AR, I just want to go there. there you know, I'll just to basically touch on what you know. What, again, you know, AR is a is a fantastic technology. There's lots you can do with augmented reality. Apple are one. Apple are investing more in, in, in AR than they are in virtual reality. That's the that's their big play. Um, so one of the platforms that I use, which which um, which I really like, and I've used for a number of years, is a, is a platform called Zappar. So Zappar is a is a um, I said it's quite a it's quite a sophisticated tool in terms of, of what, what you can create with augmented reality, uh, where you can create you know, all different different types of experience. But the one thing I really like for Zappa, which I want to chat to you about, is is, is, is again it's about getting your toes in the water, is is by creating what, what Zappa called Zap codes. So a, a Zap code is is a, I suppose you can call it a um, a QR code on steroids. Uh, this is an example for uh, quick instantia. So the small circle with the with the um, with the lightning bolt in the middle is, is that is that is what we call a zap code. So that gets created by the, the Zappa platform. So as an example, what what you would do is you would um, you would you would uh, subscribe to Zappa um, and on a monthly basis. It's also a small subscription fee. It gives you the ability to create your own zap codes. Um, and what a Zap code is is um, it's, it's, it can be accessed by an app, by the Zappa app, but it's also it's also web based as well. So it's also web based, so you don't have to download an app to your phone. So in this example, um, where I've used Zappa for a wine label, so the, the Zap code is on the on the label. It could be on a neck a neck label. It could be on a poster when you walk into the bottle store. So when you zap when you zap that Zap code, it opens up. What we call content widgets. It gives you eight content widgets, um, which links you to other pieces of content. So in this example, on the right, you'll see um, that the, 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 the different pieces of content are linked to this specific Zap code. But it can, of course, it can be different. So any one of those Zap codes is interactive linked to more information. So here in this example, um, it links to Fitness website, it links to their Facebook page, their Twitter account. There's a direct link to purchase their wine online. There's a direct link to joining their wine club. And there's two wine pairing recipes. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, I mean, recipes are fantastic. I mean, my wife collects a lot of recipe books and magazines, but I very seldom get some cooked out of the recipe, uh, recipes because when you go shopping, you don't have that recipe with you. But in this example, if we had that, the Zap code, you've got the recipe on the phone while you're shopping, you can open it up, you can get ingredients. And when you get home, you open it up again, and you've got instructions to to cook as well. So, 
Mobile has changed AR obviously dramatically as much as VR has. So you want the information really accessible and on your on your mobile device on, on your mobile device when you when you want it. Um, and then there's also a video link to a video of Britain Stanger, the history of Britain Stanger. The other zap codes, the other um, content links you can have in the, um, in the zap code. Um, you can have contacts um, for, for, so for real estate, for example. It could be their contacts, which you import directly into contacts on your phone. It could be a link to a virtual reality tour. It could be a link to other listings. Um, and what you can do as well is, you know, when you launch the, when you, when you first launch the AOR, the AOR zap code, you can have an audio clip that plays as well. So it's very versatile in terms of in terms of, of, um, of what an AR zap code can do, can do. So once you've created it, once the once the AR zap code has been created, it can be obviously shared on different different platforms as well. It can be you can have it on your label, you can have it on your business card, you can stick it to your delivery vehicles, you can have it on your posters, you can have it a real estate agent. I mean, I often walk past real estate agents and got all these photographs of of homes on in their windows. And if you want information about that home, you have to take a photograph of it and then phone someone. You know, but if they had a zap code on that for each of those properties, you just you just zap the zap code and you've got all the information, but the real estate the, the, the real estate agents details, a, a link to the listing on the, on the website where you can get more information. That really does work hard in terms of in terms of what's you know, what's possible. Um, so as I said, Zappa is, is just one of the one of the platforms. I like it because it's 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 quite it's quite cost effective to use. You know, creating you can create zap codes for any clients, um, as I said, real estate, tourism, wine, food, um, any product. So you know, walking through a store, you can then get more information about products or services or anything you know, as you as you're shopping while you're in that zone, which I think is quite exciting. Um, so yeah, so that's that's Zappa. So just to yeah, just to sum up, I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, for me, it's okay. I've given you some good ideas about what opportunities there are for AR and VR. Um, there are certainly are great tools, but as I said, it's just technology. There's some learning, there's some acceptance, and obviously there's an understanding of, of, what, of what's possible to use with VR and AR. This is just a dip into the dipping your toes into it. There's a lot more that that VR and AR can do. But I think it's just, you know, what's practical, what's practical to do now, what's practical to use now. Um, so, yeah, as I said, what's important to understand as well, that it, it, it really is about, it's not really about the technology as well. Um, it's about the content, um, and it's about how you use those technologies. So, yep, yeah, that's it. I'm looking forward to some questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Stanley. Um, Stanley, do you mind uh, putting on your, your your camera, and we'll we'll do a bit of a, a Q and A. Um, there we go. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So so Stanley, so, so thank you very much. I think that was that was really insightful, and it definitely sparked a couple of thoughts and, and comments on my side. Um, I have a, a couple of comments and and questions, which which I'll, I'll maybe I'll just post to you to get us going, and then just to remind the audience. Um, if you want to post any questions, you can put it in the chat window um, or you can put up your hand and you can actually go out the video and ask the question directly to Stanley. Um, but as I said, maybe just to get us going. Um, so something which which uh, which uh, was quite um, um, interesting, you mentioned right at the beginning, you it was actually about, about your work in the sector. You said something along the lines of that you are not a techie, but a content creator. And I think that was was quite an important um, uh, statement to make because um, it's the, the I think most people have the opportunity to be content creators. I mean, on social media, everybody who puts out content are technically creating content already. But I think, especially in the in the realm of digital marketing, it's actually really still about telling a story. And what VR and AR allows you to do is just to a large extent allow. It allows you to tell your story, to connect with your audience, to connect with your customers, and um, creating content along the way. Um, and I think that that is, is an important one because very often we think these things are so different to what we're doing already, but this is just a tool to take content creation to a next level and make it that more immersive and engaging to an audience. Because uh, obviously you, you mentioned you can be using this for, for training too, which is not telling a story, but in the space of marketing, the ability to tell your story and, and create content 
um, I think it's 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 really really powerful um, in terms of us on the other side, you know, to, to whom this is new. Then secondly, you when you spoke about the Google cameras, um, I forgot the the technical name, but um, we actually had um, a colleague whose brother was very much into uh, conservation and then the outdoors, and he was actually employed by Google about three years ago to go hiking through various um, uh, 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 national parks in, in the country and record with his with that camera on his backpack. So that that was a, a, a very good memory and it also prompted a question. So with, with those just some some general comments, I, I want to pose two questions to you and then I see there's a, a question in the in the, the chat also. So um, firstly, um, uh, with regard to let me, let me just check this question. Yeah, I think this is, is is similar to the question I was going to ask. This one is from Olivia. I'll maybe I'll, I'll post Olivia's question first because it links to what I wanted to ask. So Olivia is asking um, for a small business: Is it expensive to implement? Um, what kind of internal capacity um, in terms of your, your your people or staff um, would a business need to implement such technology? And then, do you need a large comms budget, for instance? Um, and and my version of that question. And you could choose which way you'd like to answer because it's along the same line is that if we um, in our audience there's a, a, a conference and guest house venue in Swellendam or there's a clothing retail store in um, in Cape Town um, or perhaps in Saldana um, if someone wants to get into this because I can I think we can all see the, the, the power of this what would the basics be I mean you, you spoke about the fisheye camera you spoke about using your, your mobile for AR some zapper but if someone is a, is a, a stock start beginner, how would you say what are the those entry level um, requirements that you would have um, for for a small business? Okay, so I suppose it, I suppose there's I suppose there's two ways you can look at that. I mean, there's there's one there's one solution where you're a business and you want a VR tour created. So there are there are a number of VR tour creators around South Africa, and they've been doing this. They've been creating these toys and these technologies for many years. A lot of them are Google Street View approved photographers, so they use certain cameras and certain technologies. Um, there are a lot of guys now who are doing VR tours for real estate, and that's where you know that's where the big opportunity has in terms of in terms of VR tours, especially now with lockdown and, and people don't want to host, have show houses anymore, um, yeah. but they want to sell their house. Um, yes. but, how, but uh, you know they don't want a whole lot of people taking through their homes. So I suppose the I suppose the you know the the, the, the the guys that are creating VR tours for real estate, depending on who you use, I suppose they're charging anywhere from I suppose seven hundred and fifty rand to three and a half thousand rand per property to create a VR tour, interactive VR tour. Okay. And that gives you a that gives you an extremely good sense of the property. You know, it's, okay. it's, as, it's as if you're all, you're walking through the property. So you know, it's from the front door, or even from outside. You know, you're walking in, you see the garden, you see the lounge, you see the dining room, you see the bedrooms. You know, so it can be, it can be for any from you know, any any of any, any, any of that sort of range in terms of creating one for your business. Okay. Uh, and I think it's, you know, as I said, for me, it's not just a, you know, it's not just about, um, it's not just about the VR tour. It's what you link to that as well. So, you know, if you, you know, add more more interactivity into it. You know, add a, a, a brochure you can download or a, a link to your social media. That's where you really need to make VR work. I suppose that that's one answer in terms of I have a business, I have a, a, a guest house, um, I've got a, a, a store or a, a car dealership or something. I want to create my own VR tour. You know, there are there are people that can get, that can create those for you. And the other option is that do you want to start creating VR tours yourself? Yeah. So if you want to become a VR tour creator. So typically, the, the guys that do Google Street they use quite sophisticated equipment. They use uh, a digital uh, DSLR, digital cameras, and it's a lot more workflows, a lot more, a lot more, a lot more complicated. With the dual fisheye lenses I was talking about, I mean those are now, you know, they they're starting at about, I suppose five and a half, six thousand rand for a camera, um, and the software, so the software to create it, or the software which is a license fee. Starts from 500 rand a month, where you can create multiple tours, and there's a hosting fee for a tour, which is again quite affordable. You know, it's not yes, yes, yes. so if you're yeah. if you're a if you're a young entrepreneur that wants to start creating VR tours for real estate or for tourism, your investment is a camera, and then your investment is the software, and then it's your time. Um, okay. 
think it's, as I said, I mean, we are, I mean, I am, I am, I am working with a lot of the real estate agents and uh, from the tourism side. So, you know, we're looking for people that can shoot for us. You know, we're looking at upskilling them and training them and getting them to shoot and then providing the work for them. But them also being, but them also being proactive and also trying to find, you know, going to the small businesses and offering their services. You know, can yeah. I, can I do a, you know, even even for restaurants now. I mean, I've been to a few restaurants now. You know, um, after after the, the hard lockdown, and I mean, yes, you know, to, you know, to be able to look around a restaurant or look around a hotel before you go and but before you go and visit gives you a lot of comfort um, in terms of the safety and the protocols they do now. And old photographs and old videos don't crack it anymore. People want to see new new material. No, 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 definitely. I, I think I'm glad you actually mentioned the um, the. Um, Looking for people to to train in in, the, in this kind of um, tech and content creation, because uh, I know this is not directly necessarily linked to, to the tech itself. But uh, for those of you, and I think most of us have probably heard the, the latest um, uh, stats, employment statistics that came out in uh, yesterday from Statistics SA, which painted a very dire picture of the employment um, or unemployment crisis in, in in the country. And I was thinking this. Um, uh, would, would you say this is an, an important, I think you actually have answered already, but um, an, uh, an interesting opportunity for young entrepreneurs or for um, people who are creating jobs in local towns to take up uh, VR and AR content production as, as a way forward, because I can actually imagine from what you said, the, the cost to entry or the barriers to entry from a, um, a cost point of view of, yes, of course, you've got to invest in some of the tech, but it's not exorbitant. Um, and would you say there is a gap in the market currently for, for young entrepreneurs to possibly um, step into that space? Because from from my, my little anecdotal story of, of our friend who was the, the, the wildlife enthusiast that Google got deployed, I mean, if I imagine him multiplied by 100, uh, there, there may be an opportunity. Do you think that's something that, that could be emerging um, in the kind of, um, Entry level space for, for VR and expand from there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. I mean, it's happening. It's happening globally. I mean, there's a company in the in the UK now that just services the real estate industry, um, and they've recruited and, and trained up a whole lot of photographers all through the UK, and that's what they're doing now. Yeah, they're doing mm. they're doing VR tours for for, for for real estate, and again for it's, it's also not just real estate for sale. It's for rental as well. I mean, you don't you don't necessarily you don't necessarily have to go and visit a rent if, you, if you're renting a property. You don't have to do a viewing if you've yes. got a VR tour. Yes. And the other nice feature that's just been that's just now started now with VR tours as well is that is that I can do a live VR tour with you as we're doing a, a Zoom call or a Microsoft Teams call. So if I'm if I'm trying to if I'm a, a property agent or I'm an events company or I've, I've got a meeting venue, I can do a, 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 a video call with you, but use a VR tour. I can walk you through using the VR tour. So once okay. the VR tour is created, it becomes a live VR tour. And then people can ask questions. You know, is there, you know, is there, is there a washing machine in the scullery? And you can go and have a look. You know, and, mm -hmm. and is there are there plug points in the kitchen? And you can go and have a look. You know, it's so all of yes, that things yes. can be answered through a VR tour, a live, a live video tour. Okay, that's that's interesting, and I was sure the same can be applied to uh, guest houses or conference venues. Um, or even shops. I imagine walking through a shop. Okay, you can't fit on the shoe, but I mean, you you could look at the at, at um, in in clothing stores or in other retail stores. I think the same principle applies. So so that's really um, very good to know. There there's a question from Gareth in in the chat um, window. So I'll just read it quickly. Um, to you, Stanley, and then I think we're going to start wrapping up because time has has caught up with us a little bit. But so Gareth's uh, comment and question is: um, It says they're creating jobs in the call center sector in the Cape. Um, Amazon, for example, has over four and a half thousand employees out of a total of 35,000. Most, especially in COVID, um, we're not able to fly in prospective buyers of our services to get the look and feel. Um, the centers they have built and the beauty of Cape Town. So the question is, um, what ideas you may have around, um, sorry, what ideas are there around using technology to present our offering? I'm sure you can also see that question. Um, Understanding, yeah. but any comments on that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's 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 a perfect use case for for virtual reality. You know, I mean, you can you know, you can you can create a VR tour of a, of any sort of venue or call center or meeting place, whatever, um, and then share that with share that with people quite easily. And it can be added, it can be created quite simply and easily as well. 
Um, I mean, there's a there's a company in the states. Basically, it's quite interesting what 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 they've developed. They've developed a VR recording system for construction, progress of construction. So every day they they developed a system where they basically put a VR camera on the on the guy's hard hat, walks through the whole construction site, it creates pictures as they go, and they do that every single day. So they wow. can then refer back to they can you know, they can any contractor or builder or investor in the property can then go back per day and see exactly what the what the progress was. Wow. Every okay. single day. And they can pick out obviously they can pick out problems, they can pick out issues, they can see who's not work's not being done or not being completed. So it's a great way to be able to I mean VR is the only way to do it. I mean you don't have to go and visit a site every single day. You know, you just, okay. just use VR to do that. All right. No, no, no. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Stanley. And thanks for, for taking that question. Uh, we are kind of at the end of the session. I just want to, to make one or two last comments and then maybe Stanley, a, a last word from your side to, to leave with the audience. Um, the, the only thing I want to say is that um, I think uh, what a big opportunities also lie in um, gaming for, for VR um, and AR. And uh, I know we don't have time to go into to that today, but I think that's a, a very a market that's that's probably going to explode as the tech and the costs um, come down for that thing. And then I suppose also in the training space, I know probably creating um, VR and AR for specifically training, like you mentioned in the airline industry, that's probably quite expensive. So that's something that happens at large scale. But I do get a sense that this is really um, uh, um, something that's going to grow and grow. And as we uh, start adopting it, it's going to become a very important player um, in, in, the, in the space. And I just see Tim, who's from my unit, he um, said, sorry, combine VR and drones, what a combination. So, so yeah, I, I must admit, earlier I had a picture of a little girl with a VR. This does evoke a sense of fun and imagination and creativity. So, so that's, that's a positive thoughts about it. But, but Stanley, maybe some last comments from your side before um, I, I wrap things up and then close off. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I mean, one of the things we're doing in the Kruger is we are actually filming VR with drones. So you'd be able to sit in our theater and you'll be flying. It feels as if you're flying through the, through, over the Kruger. Oh, that's um, so yeah, so VR and drones is, 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 a, is a perfect example. I mean, we've got one, one, of, the, one of the shows we're doing is um, from the Amazon. Um, and the one shot, so you can imagine you're sitting in this 360 cylinder and it's mm -hmm. a drone shot from the canopy. And okay. the drone basically drops slowly down to the floor wow. of, the, of the Amazon. And it feels as if you're in a lift. It feels like you're dropping down and you're in this lift and you're just floating down from the can top of the Amazon canopy right down to the ground. I mean, it's fantastic. It's such a fantastic awesome. experience. So drones are, yeah, absolutely. That's the way to, that's the way to use them. That Tim, Tim is our resident techie, so I think he might try that as a personal experiment. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, but, it's going to be crushed, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a challenge. <laughs> Okay, um, Stanley, we have come to the, the end of the time we have available for today's session, but I really just want to say a really, really um, uh, heartfelt thank you um, for, for presenting this webinar to, for us today and uh, for sharing your thoughts and, and your insights and your, your views of what's to come. Uh, for me, it's definitely been an eye-opener, and I really hope that it sparked um, a lot of ideas and some new thoughts with our audience also. Because, this, as I said, this is really an ex exciting um, space, which I think all of us are watching. And as we get to grips of it, hopefully there will be much more content out there which we all can engage with. So, Stanley, and to you and um, to Platypus Digital, um, love the name, by the way, of your company. Uh, th thank you very, very much. It was great to work with you, and we really appreciate your time and efforts in presenting it today. Okay, thank you, Stanley. Thanks. Thank you. To our, our audience, um, thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, I, I think today, as you saw with the invitation, is a, what we call our, our, the start of our second season of the Go Digital Western Cape webinar series. I think today is episode 22. Um, so thank you that you uh, have joined us today. We hope you found some great value from what Stanley was able to share and that um, this is something you can apply to, to your business journey going ahead and just sparking some new creative ideas. Um, then lastly, to our team at the Digital um, Economy Unit, um, doing all the hard work in the background, thanks to you also for all making this possible. So from our side, um, it's really good that we could share this time with you. For those of you who have a few minutes extra, I'll be scrolling a display um, where you can see some information on our other projects in the unit, 
on the Go Digital Western Cape campaign and also the, the link to how you can access um, this recording of this webinar in future and uh, the recordings of the past uh, 20 or so webinars in the past. So thank you very much. Uh, good to see you. We'll see you next time. Um, be safe and take care. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.